One day, a little girl in a small town of India saw a plane flying above her house. She was fascinated, curious. At home, in school, she spent most of her time flying paper planes. And one day, she shocked her father saying she wants to fly an aircraft. For me, it was very far-fetched to think um, I'd get to fly on the space shuttle because I lived in India in a very small town and um, forget about space, I didn't even know if my folks were going to let me go to the engineering college. But she went on to spend 31 days, 14 hours and 54 minutes in space, creating history. Born on 17 March 1962 in Karnal, Haryana, the youngest of the four siblings had no formal name and was lovingly called Montu for the first few years. When her parents took her to enroll her in school, she ironically chose to be named Kalpana, meaning imagination. Trainees at Karnal's flying club would often fly above her house. On Montu's insistence, her father requested the chief flying officer there for a joy ride. This ride on a glider gave wing to Kalpana's dreams. Four, three, two, one. Kalpana's parents were very supportive of her education. After passing out of Tagore Balniketan and Dayal Singh College, Kalpana travelled to Chandigarh for higher studies. Kalpana went to Chandigarh alone. She told me, I don't want to take father along. He will recommend my name. I don't want to enroll in any college through any recommendation. Growing up, sleeping on the roof watching stars, planets and constellations in the sky every night, she had made up her mind. I was teaching set theory in class. When I said that women astronauts in India is an example of an empty set, Kalpana said, Today the set is empty, but in the years to come, it might not be an empty set anymore. I was taken aback. She had already made up her mind to prove me wrong someday. She was the first woman to study aeronautical engineering at the Punjab Engineering College. The college didn't have a girls hostel then, but that did not come in her way. Kalpana was in an environment where she was probably afraid. And to get over that fear, she decided to learn Karate. I know that she was very good at Karate. She could break with her hands. The aeronautical labs in the college acted as launching pads to propel her journey to space. Kalpana was very serious, very enthusiastic about her studies. She would regularly ask questions in class. She was always praised in class. She was very calm but very energetic. Right after graduating, Kalpana applied to University of Texas. She wasn't sure if her family would let her go overseas, but her father was her rock. Kalpana moved to Arlington in the United States in September of 1982. She moved into an apartment two doors down from where I was living. And I happened to walk by the window where she was living and I saw her lying on the floor facing away sleeping. And then I thought, this poor Indian girl just can't even afford a bed. So I, I, I had an extra fold-away bed in my apartment. So I went and got it and knocked on the door. And then she woke up and I said, you don't have to sleep on the floor, you can sleep on this bed. And then she just laughed because she said she had a bed in the other room, but she just was so tired she fell asleep on the floor because she just arrived from India. Common interests like diving and flying got Kalpana and Harrison closer. And by December of 1983, they were married.
Kalpana was different from everyone else. She was very passionate, very hardworking. In 1988, at 26, Kalpana started working at the NASA Ames Research Center, where she did her research on takeoff and landing concepts. Kalpana had a commercial pilot's license for airplanes and seaplanes. She was certified as a flight instructor for gliders. Three years later, she became a US citizen. Kalpana applied to be part of NASA's Astronaut Corps in 1992 to take part in US space missions. She applied for the first time in 92, I think it was. But she made it quite far there in the selection process because she received a request to go get a medical exam done, which she did. And the second time she applied in 70, in 94 is, is when she got it. She was in one of the early groups to go interview. She was in the second in the interview group. And then she found out that, that December that she was selected for the astronaut corps. At 32, she was selected for her first space mission. I was in Delhi for a hearing before the judicial magistrate. I saw Kalpana's photo on the front page of the newspaper with the headline, Kalpana Chavla, the first Indian woman to be selected for NASA's space program. I showed the newspaper to the magistrate and said, I am her father. In 1995, Kalpana began her training as an astronaut to sustain in zero gravity and survive underwater. At the Johnson Space Station in Houston, she was trained for spacewalks, intricate operations of the shuttle and crisis management at space. During my life, I would say I've been inspired by explorers. When I read about these people, I think the one thing that just stands out is their perseverance. At 35, Kalpana got her first chance to enter space. The biggest uh, advantage was she was very determined. She was, whatever she wanted to do, she would not give up. And the, and the lesson to draw from that is you don't have to be the best or the smartest person. You have to be, you have to be the most determined or one of the most determined to be successful. There's lots of very smart people who never achieved anything, but uh, there's lots, lots of not so smart people who achieved a lot. In Kalpana's, in Kalpana's case, she was both smart, smart and determined. It was quite a combination. Four, three, two, one. On 19 November 1997, as part of the six-astronaut crew, she took off on board Space Shuttle Columbia Flight STS-87, becoming the first India-born woman in space. It's uh, a dome of a dark sky and stars everywhere and the Earth uh, Last time covered with thunderstorms here and there, with uh, some small sprays of lightning, and every once in a while, city lights, the clouds. And it uh, is very much like a storybook. While in space, Kalpana had a long conversation with then Prime Minister I.K. Gujral. Kalpana, we are proud of you. Each one of us in India is proud of us proud of a person like you who has done such a pioneering work and particularly the women and youth of India take great deal of pride in seeing what you have done in the space. My hearty congratulations. You know when I think of you, I think what a long journey you have covered from Karnal to space. Thank you sir uh, very much. Uh, those are very kind words. It's such an honor and privilege to be able to this very special mission. The space shuttle orbited the Earth 252 times, covering over 6 million miles. The 15 day, 16 hours, and 34 minute flight was a dedicated science and research mission. The trip was a success.
Kalpana started the tradition of sending two children from India to NASA every year. She helped send at least 14 students to NASA. At 40, Kalpana went to space for the second time. Just before she took off, we met Kalpana. We hardly had 45 minutes to speak to her. The last hug is etched in my memory. On 16 January 2003, she flew on board Space Shuttle Columbia Flight STS-107. The crew of seven took off for a 16-day flight from the Kennedy Space Center. Three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of... Their mission was to conduct 80 experiments, including studying astronaut health and safety. After days of round-the-clock experiments, the crew was ready to return. You simply do not have time to delve on yesterdays because you have to finish the whole mission properly. So I think once we get back to Earth, we will have a lot of time to talk about this and that's when I really plan to do that. The space shuttle Columbia was going over North Texas. You're looking at live picture now. But on 1st February 2003, during Columbia's re entry into the Earth's atmosphere, hot air entered the shuttle's wing where there was a damage during takeoff. Kalpana died along with the rest of the crew when the spaceship disintegrated just 16 minutes prior to scheduled landing. Well, it's something, it's something you, you know it can, can, can always happen, but you just don't expect it to happen to you. There was a shock for everybody, of course, not just me, but the family and, and not just for India in general and people around the world. Her mortal remains were scattered at Zion National Park in Utah. This small town girl in Karnal who dreamt of going into space, she chased her dream. It wasn't available in the country. She went halfway around the world and went after her dream and grabbed it. Kalpana was an indomitable spirit. And as we all know, indomitable spirits do not die. Punjab Engineering College now has a hostel for girls named Kalpana Chawla Hostel. University of Texas also has the Kalpana Chawla Hall in memory of one of its most celebrated graduates. I was not born for one corner. The whole universe is my native land. 